We will be beginning the webinar shortly. Hello and welcome to today's presentation, Four Ways to Finish Strong on Social Media in 2020, brought to you by GoDaddy and Clarion Food and Beverage Events. Before we get started with our discussion, we would like to share some housekeeping items to keep in mind. All audience members are on listen-only mode, which means you are muted. We will be monitoring audience engagement on the dashboard and do encourage you to use the question panel to ask our speakers questions throughout the presentation. There will be time for a Q&A at the end of the presentation as well. Please note this webinar is being recorded and will be available online in the coming week, and we have a brief poll throughout the session we hope you will fill out as well. Thank you again for joining us today, and now without further delay, let me introduce Jeffrey Brown, Webinar Manager with GoDaddy. Hi everyone, I hope everyone is having a great Tuesday, and some of you are, hopefully most of you are staying warm. <laughs> if you're in Florida, maybe Georgia, Southern Hemisphere, you know, getting some tan, getting some sun today. <laughs> but anyways, hope you're all having a great day and hope you're ready to learn four ways to finish strong on social media in 2020. So thinking about this webinar, thinking about this topic, I was like, what are four ways that we can really finish strong on social media for local businesses, specifically the hospitality industry? So I definitely wanna make sure that not only are you learning how to end your year strong and on a high note, but also how to carry these four trends, these four ways into 2021 as well. Um, so a little bit about me, my name is Jeffrey Brown. I'm a webinar manager at GoDaddy, GoDaddy Social. I've been with the company for almost six years and I would have to say one of my favorite things about my role is getting to hang out and with everyone, business owners, hospitality, um, dental, and get to educate you all for an hour. So getting to learn from you as well through your questions, some things that I haven't really dove into as well. So keep the questions coming throughout the webinar. Um, really make this engaging as well, because I know I'm always that person that's like, oh, I don't want to ask a question, but then someone else asks one and it gets my brain going. So definitely feel free to ask questions, network, you know, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat box. Um, but, you know, definitely excited about being here with all of you today. Um, at GoDaddy, GoDaddy Social, we work with local businesses, entrepreneurs, you know, just to really make sure that they're getting that same great customer service, that same great engagement online, just like they would in person. So I'm here to bring you some hot tips and tricks and ways that you can make sure that you're ending this year strong, but also starting the year off in a great way as well. So the first thing that we're going to be going over is how to create crave-worthy content on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Now, I know in the past you probably heard, oh, you need to be on these three main social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And then you see other ones come into the mix, like Snapchat, you think about Pinterest, um, you think about TikTok as well. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're looking at these platforms, but you're deciding which one works best for you and which one works best for your audience and your community as well. After that, we're gonna dive into how to use video content to connect with new and existing customers. Definitely making sure that you're mixing in video content, whether that's Instagram stories, YouTube content, whether you're doing a day in the life, whether you're doing um, an explainer video, what have you, definitely make sure you're working in that video content to make sure that you're staying engaging, but also top of mind as well. And then also growing your community, hence I'm using the word community right here. Um, and we're gonna go over audience and community later on, but definitely make sure like when you're referring to your audience, you're referring to how you're gonna build your community because you already have your audience in the palm of your hand and that's the cell phone. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're building that bigger community. And we're gonna go over different ways you can do that through um, great customer service, um, but also great cus social customer care as well. And last but not least, diving into some great tips and tricks on how to foolproof your advertising strategy without breaking the bank. So looking into boosting posts, advertising on Facebook and Instagram, but also taking a look at working with brand ambassadors and influencers as well. So really excited to be here with all of you today. Like I said, feel free to ask questions throughout this webinar. Um, wanna make this as engaging as possible, but we're gonna go ahead and dive into our first talking point. So create crave-worthy content on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So 
all these methods that you're going to be seeing in all these posts and these captions, just because it's on one platform like Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, doesn't mean that you can't try this type of content out on different platforms. Just, to, just definitely make sure that you're mixing up your content, you're having fun. More importantly, you're just really having a great time with social media because that's what you're on here for. You're here to connect. You're here to engage. You're here to, you know, lend some humor if you can, um, but also let people know what's going on with your business as well. So for this example right here, um, this is a great example from Gabriella's. This is actually in Austin, Texas. Um, so Gabriella's downtown, it says, need a pick me up. Our Teresa Queso will have you cheesing all day long. Um, hashtag Gabriella's downtown, hashtag East Side ATX, and they give credit to um, Chubby Diaries. And this is an influencer, um, a consumer, but also a brand ambassador as well. So you definitely want to make sure that you're really looking at how you're engaging with your customers. More importantly, like how you're positioning yourself as that engaging business online. So I really love this picture. I mean, when you think about queso, when you think about going to a restaurant, and especially chorizo queso, I mean, loaded queso, look at this cheese pool, <laughs> look at this guy's face, he's very excited about this. So definitely make sure that you're working on your organic social media strategy for your restaurant, for your hotel, for your night, for your club, for your, for your nightlife business. Definitely make sure that you're looking at different ways to work in organic strategies versus just dumping in money and saying, oh, I hope this works and not really looking at what works and what doesn't work. First, start off with that organic strategy first. This is free for everyone. And this is just a great example of how a local business is using a customer's photo. One, this is saving them time, but also using two different types of hashtags right here in this example. Hashtag Gabriella is downtown. This is their business hashtag, but also to also position them in Austin where they're located, but also they're on the east side of Austin as well. So their business hashtag, their branded hashtag, and also their local hashtag as well, East End, East Side ATX. And so as you can see, they're getting the engagement. And that's exactly what you want these types of content to garner is engagement. You want people saying, um, yes, my fave, or giving some emojis. And you want to respond back to those as well. And definitely make sure if you don't have time to respond that you're also leaving, you know, a thumbs up, a heart, you know, a clap exclamation point. Really make sure you're getting engaged with your customers online, just like you would in person. So one of the first things that we had listed um, just a second ago was share customer testimonials. When you think about spreading organic word of mouth, when you think about your customers seeing great things that you're doing for your local community, you think about your review sites. And I know sometimes everyone's like, ah, oh, Yelp, Google, you know, don't really want to spread my reviews. But if you have great five-star reviews, don't just let them collect dust. You know, copy those reviews, use apps like Canva or Over, um, and make sure you're creating great content, just like in these two examples with Viva Chile Indio and Sabarusa. So you can see in the, these two great examples, they pulled great quotes from their customers and reviews from Yelp, Loretta, and Dennis. So you definitely want to make sure that you're using great captions, great photos, great color to really make sure that you're making these customer testimonials pop. More importantly, this is just a way for you to engage with your customers and show future customers the great things that you're doing in-house as well. Because remember, we're not just talking about just Denise or Loretta, we're talking about your future customers as well. And this is when they're deciding if they wanna dine with you, if they wanna get you know, a holiday meal from you, or if they wanna go to another business. So don't just rely on your review sites and people stopping at them. Make sure that you're spreading that organic word of mouth across your social sites as well. So I know we talked about hashtags a little while ago, with Gabriella's downtown and Eastside ATX. So I really want us to think about hashtags being beneficial for our business. And I know when we think about hashtags, the first thing that we think about is, okay, where do I come up with one from? You know, how do I make sure that I'm using one that no one else is using? And honestly, you can search for them on Instagram. You just go to your Instagram search bar and you type in hashtag, you use the hashtag um, icon right here. And then you type in, Baker's Retreat or ATX Bakery, use something like that to definitely make sure that it's not being used, but also just look at businesses around you and kind of see what they're using and, and see if that's gonna work for your business as well. But the way that I can tell you that hashtags are gonna work for your business is if you're using relevant ones, this is where it's gonna really work for your local business. So let's take Swedish Hill, for example. So Swedish Hill is using their branded hashtag. They always use this, no matter what. More importantly, I like how they're using this um, 
caption this photo as well. They're using the behind the scenes photo. So I like this shot as well. They're doing it way from above. You know, you can get someone to stand on a ladder. You can get like, you can do an aerial shot with your phone, however you want to do this, but you can definitely make sure you're taking shots from different angles as well. And we'll get into that in just a second. But behind the scenes, pastry chef extraordinaire, Jennifer Tucker. She sprinkles the finishing touches on our warm flaky apple ham pies, filled with sugary sweet, Grand Smiths and Honeycrisp. So when you're thinking about engaging content, you're thinking about that crave worthy content. You can't just show, um, you know, just some fritters or, you know, just an apple turnover. You really have to explain it. You really have to dive into it. You have to paint that overall experience. More importantly, ending it on a sweet note with a great relevant hashtag right here. And that's their branded hashtag. Now over to the right is Forged Restaurant. Now Forged Restaurant, they're using relevant hashtags. They really wanna make sure that they're using a few. Now I'm gonna be honest with y'all. <laughs> you can use up to 30 hashtags. Do I recommend it? No. Um, and I'm not saying what they're doing is wrong. They're using ones that are gonna be relevant to their picture, relevant to their caption, relevant to their business. And if you look at Swedish Hill, they're using this one consistently. So it really boils down to, are you using your hashtags consistently? Which brings us back to, are you posting consistently? Which is gonna be the name of the game when we're talking about content for your business. You have to do it consistently. You can't do it you know, great one week and then the next week, all right, I'm gonna take a week off. That's not how social media works and you know that's not how your customers work. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're using one of these two examples and you're really testing out hashtags to see if they work for your business or if they don't work for your business. If you need to use more than two or three, like Forge Restaurant, or if you need to just use one branded hashtag like Swedish Shell. So one thing I love about social media, more than that, I feel like what restaurants do such a great job um, on social media at, and even when you walk in, if you're doing takeout right now, if you're picking up curbside, is I can always recognize a restaurant brand, and I love it. Whether it's from their color, whether it's from their font, and it's exciting is because you know you've done a good job at your social media presence. So this is a business called Takeda Mucho, um, a Mexican restaurant. They're the sister restaurant restaurant of Gabriela's downtown. So no surprise, they have like great photos, that great cheese pull from their customers they actually use. So in this example, you can actually see, you see a lot of pink. When I first think of this, my, my head goes to Mean Girls. And they've done posts, of course, on Wednesdays we wear pink, things like that but um, they can't just solely rely on that as well. So as you can see, they're really utilizing their social media profile to speak for their brand, to speak for their restaurant, more importantly, to speak to their customers. So in this bio, and they personalize it very well, they says, talk to mucho. They let people know they're in Austin, Texas, give them something to talk about or to talk about, play on words. <laughs> they're the sister restaurant of Gabriela's downtown. So don't be afraid to promote your sister, your brother, your company's restaurants on that on another page as well. Check out our menu. You know, when I think about local businesses right now and I think about your business profile and I think about your bio, having a link is very important. It's crucial at this point. Is your link pointing me to do delivery? Is it pointing me to do curbside? Um, is it pointing me to um, donate to some type of charity that you have going on? Um, you definitely want to make sure that you have a link there and not just a link that's just going to take them to your website and that website's not mobilized. Really make sure that you really put into consideration where what's going to be right here and how that link's going to serve not only your business but also your community as well. So really make sure that you think about that link. And below you'll see Instagram highlights, which I'm going to go into a little bit later. But Instagram highlights really do serve a great purpose. And I know sometimes we're like, oh, it's something else that we have to work on. But using Instagram highlights is going to really make sure that it's going to save space on your Instagram feed, but also your Instagram stories as well. You want to make sure that in your highlights, you're adding great content as well. But we'll dive into that in just a little bit. But this is just some great content right here. And as you can see, their brand is consistent throughout all their posts. You see the pink in every single thing that they put out there. More importantly, right here in this post, with the girl with the hat, ready, set, jet, set. She's actually, um, this actually user generated content post. And the one right next to it is a branded post that the restaurant actually did. Um, and as you can see, they're being consistent by using their branded hashtag, Takaria Mucho. So whatever you do, really, really make sure that you're using your branded hashtag consistently. And even put it in your um, bio as well. We know we don't see it right there, but we do see them using it consistently 
throughout their post. So always make sure whatever you do, you either have it in your bio or use it consistently on your post. And as you can see, this garnered some great engagement. Amanda Jade said, do we have to make reservations? I actually read down a little bit in that and they actually said, no, we don't actually take reservations at this time. Um, so you definitely wanna make sure you're asking questions like that. More importantly, you can actually pin questions like that to the top as well. So we're gonna dive into another example of social customer care later on, but I did want to surface this as well. So you hear about social customer care, you hear about great customer service, responding to reviews, one thing you really want to think about is um, how are you going to be preemptive, proactive, and reactive? So think about it this way. You want to be preemptive in letting your customers know about your deals, your specials early on. Um, you want to be proactive by letting them know, okay, we're going to be closed these days. We're going to be doing this on Christmas or we're going to be doing this on Thanksgiving or New Year's Eve. And then be reactive by responding to comments and concerns. Um, as well. So definitely make sure you're taking a cue from Joe Gambino's Bakery or Bakery Bar and making sure that you're providing great social customer care as well for your local business. And also if you want to create crave-worthy content, um, lend a note to new menu features. And I love that they included video content here as well. And this is just a great example. They said, we love when you call us Papacito. Um, the Smoky Cocktail Jaws inspiration from three classic drinks, the Old Fashioned, the Negroni, and the Manhattan. So don't just, you know, post a drink, and, you know, don't let anyone know what you have a new um, cocktail coming out. Let them know what's inspired by. Let them know your inspiration. Let them know the ingredients as well. Remember, you're paying that overall experience. More importantly, you're creating that crave-worthy content that people are like, oh, I have to go order a drink kit from them right now. I have to go get tacos delivered or something to that effect. So definitely make sure you're paying that picture for them online, just like you would in person. So we talked about Instagram highlights, and I definitely, of course, wanted to make sure that we talked about Instagram stories as well. Um, how many of us actually post to Instagram stories? And if you are, I hope you're actively using them as well. <laughs> and even if you use them in your personal life, but you definitely want to make sure you're using Instagram stories to stay engaged. You're here to stay top of mind. And when I think about Instagram stories, I think about where your consumers are spending most of their time. I don't know if y'all are aware of this, 75% of your consumers, um, no, well, actually, that's, that's the wrong <laughs> statistic. Your consumers are spending 75% of their time on Instagram stories when they're on Instagram. So that's why you're thinking about, oh, I'm not getting enough likes on my actual content. That's because your users are in your Instagram stories. So whatever they're looking at the most, that's what they're going to see the most in their feed. So that's why you definitely want to make sure that you're thinking about your Instagram stories more then you're thinking about your um, content in your newsfeed. And so one way to do this is by posting different types of Instagram stories, um, whether that's like more cafe, Two Hands New York, Mozart's Coffee, or Home Slice Pizza. All of these examples for their stories are really different, whether you're talking about the new Selena premiere that came out and they wanted to do a drink kit and an actual um, pizza. Because you know in the movie, she talks about pepperoni pizza with hot sauce. And so they actually did a drink kit, um, which you could take home, make your own drinks, margaritas, they did dessert, as well as a pepperoni pizza with hot sauce on the side. Um, so just a note to Selena because the new Selena Netflix premiered. And then I love this example right here with Mozart's Coffee. Um, this is Austin Food Adventures. They're a local influencer in Austin, but Mozart's Coffee does this great light show here in Texas. And so this is just a great example of using great user-generated content as well. And then you definitely want to make sure that, you know, you're letting your audience know of, you know, Cyber Monday deals. You know, do you have any specials coming up right before Christmas, you know, right for the holidays? You know, definitely let them know what's going on and do that in your Instagram stories. And if you're able to do the swipe up feature, make sure you use that to direct them to a website, to delivery, um, to do a shipment or an order, anything like that. Definitely make sure you're adding that into your stories as well. And use user-generated content. Using user-generated content is just going to further your reach. The thing I think about, <laughs> excuse me, when I think about user-generated content is trying to become a local celebrity. And I'm not joking, that is my ultimate goal is for a restaurant to use my content one day. It hasn't happened. Um, but I'm deaf, well, it's happened in stories, but not on their actual content or in their actual feed. And one thing to think about is your consumers, they love seeing their friends um, on social media. 
So if it's an example like this with Puesto with Jasmine Whitley or Grove Wine Bar um, of these people, of these two ladies, you know, they're out for dinner. You definitely want to make sure that you're using your customers' content. The reason why is your consumers, they trust other consumers versus just straight branded content. And that's just straight, plain and simple. Yes, you work hard to produce great content, but also use your consumer's content as well. One, it's gonna save you time. Two, it builds a better connection with you in your community on social media. It makes them say like, oh wait, this is not a robot behind social media. This is an actual person. I might, I might know this person, or I've seen this person in their restaurant. So definitely lend an ear to your customers and make sure that you're using their content as well. And so I know we covered Instagram highlights a little bit earlier, but definitely wanted to make sure that, you know, you're using Instagram highlights as another space for possibly maybe your website or popular things that are happening seasonally. So I love this example from Easy Tiger. They um, haven't updated, haven't updated this one. Um, and I just saw this, but they said Thanksgiving, Oktoberfest, um, XL party. Um, you know, they did a bake with an influencer, starters, curbside delivery. So even when um, the pandemic started back in March, they even started a thing where they did starters for everyone. And if with your order, you actually got a starter kit. So y'all know I went and got a starter kit. I should have taken pictures of my bread and put it on here for y'all to see. Um, but I definitely did make a lot of bread in the beginning. <laughs> and I went to Easy Tiger because I saw this on their Instagram highlights and I loved it. But as you can see, they still have a curbside and delivery. So definitely make sure that you're using your Instagram highlights to make sure that you're using it as a supplement to what your consumers are looking for the most. You know, most, most people don't want to cook around the holidays. Um, they want to order out from local businesses. You know, they still want to be in the know of different things. So maybe you have like some cocktail classes online, different things like that. Make sure that you put these types of things in your Instagram highlights just to stay top of mind, as well to stay engaged with your customers. So I'm, I'm going to be honest, I forgot a poll question earlier. I do apologize, but I did want to ask one, um, the second go around, and I hope I didn't miss this one, is I wanted to ask, and this is a poll, is how many of you are actually using video content right now for your local business? You can vote yes, vote no, maybe so. <laughs> awesome, okay, so you definitely wanna make sure that you're using video content to connect with your customers. Um, and by the looks of it, it looks like it's got a split, but you definitely wanna make sure that you're looking at video to not just connect with your customers, but to engage them more. Remember, you wanna be consistent with your content. More importantly, you wanna paint that overall experience. Um, think about yourself as a consumer. When you order from a restaurant or you pick up curbside or you get it delivered, you know, you smell that food or you get that drink kit. You're like, ah, I remember when we were here doing this or, you know, or doing this or how we ordered this last year. You know, think about those kind of experiences that, you know, you have painted in your mind from the food and the places that you go and think of how you can do that for your local business as well, just social media and just for your video. So one way that you can actually do this is a series. I love a series. I don't know if anyone's watched the great British, um, British baking show I have. I find it actually soothing, which is really weird. And also I compare it to the American cooking shows and the British cooking shows, hilarious. Um, but one thing that you definitely wanna make sure you're doing is using video content, whether that's a collaboration like Assembly Kitchen and Commodore, or whether that's just you cooking up your favorite homemade biscuits that you produce at home, but you're doing it in your restaurant for a video for all your community to see and for them to follow along on Instagram Live as well. When you're thinking about your social media videos, think about if you were just doing this in person, except there's just a phone in front of you and you're just being videotaped, but it's still live. And I definitely want you all to practice that as well. I know I've ordered two tripods to use for work um, for different videos that we do. And honestly, I've grown so accustomed to them. Um, it's, it's very weird. So just setting up your own video and getting that all done, like it's, it's a little bit of work, but once it comes together, you get really into it. You're like, oh, I can do videos from above and they can watch me cooking, different things like that. So really get into it. More importantly, have fun. Um, I know um, different restaurant owners that have done 
videos in their own home and their dog walks in, they're like, you know what? We need to pause, give our dog a treat. Or their kids run in and they're like, their kids join in or something. Don't just make it about, you know, strictly business, make it about community. And people, they definitely want to see what your life is about as well. So make it as personal and, and as authentic as possible. So different ways that you can do that is through educational videos. Um, I know I cook at home. I like to call myself a decent home cook. But at the same time, as a local business, you can lend that expertise as well. Some different things that you can do in your own kitchen or your own home, um, different types of drinks that you can make, that, things like that. Or if you make your own bread in your restaurant or your own jams or your own cheese, different things like that, show up those products on your um, social media sites, on your videos as well. But you're not making it salesy, you're paying that experience of how your customers can actually use it. Company videos and culture videos, I always think back to the office when they filmed that um, commercial. <laughs> I'm not saying film a commercial, don't do that. <laughs> but definitely do a behind the scenes, do a Q&A with your audience. You know, get to know Jeffrey, the restaurant owner, or get to know our chef, or get to know our host, different things like that. And the thing is, they can do them from home as well, or they can do them, you know, before their shift starts. And my favorite example is if you've ever seen those Vogue videos and they do like 72 questions with so and so, and they just follow them around doing things, that's a good example to also copy as well. FAQs, I talked about this a little bit earlier in your Instagram highlights. People have questions. You're a business owner. You don't have all the time to answer these questions. So put them in um, a series of videos, you know, five questions with Mike, 10 questions with Lauren. Um, and, you know, and every week she does these questions and they're answering common questions that we get um, on our social media sites. You know, number one, will you ever take reservations? No. <laughs> funny things like that. Make it funny. Make it entertaining. Um, customer testimonial videos. We talked about doing it in the context way um, as far as like content on your feed, but have some fun with these videos as well. Um, if you've ever seen SNL and they do like dramatic readings of restaurant reviews, um, do that on your social media sites. Do a spotlight on a person and do your positive reviews and you know sing them out loud or something like that. Have fun with it. And of course, great how-to videos of how does something comes together, wet, whether that's you know, your brioche buns that you make in-house or your skinny margarita that you do from scratch. So definitely let your customers know what's going on, but more importantly, make sure that you're using your platforms as a whole. And I love this example from Suerte, um, their restaurant in Austin, and they were doing um, Mezcal classes during Mezcal week. So really use your platform as a whole, not just as one single thing like, oh, Instagram photos. No, Instagram is photos, reels, stories, and also guides now. If I don't know if y'all picked up that new feature yet. Um, Instagram just released guides. And if you haven't, um, hopefully in the next webinar that we do, I can actually show you some examples. And definitely for the hospitality industry, this is a huge, huge thing because you can do guides for your local industry. So the winter guide for Austin, Texas from Sorte ATX, you know, best places to eat, drink, hang out. Um, or different guides to, you know, if you're a candy shop, you know, a gift guide for the holidays, for chocolates, different things like that. So that's coming up soon, but you definitely want to make sure that you're using your profiles as a whole and not just for one single use. So definitely make sure you're having fun with your um, platforms, you're experimenting with them, but more importantly, you're not just on all three of them or more than all three and you're stretching yourself too thin. If you're getting more engagement on Twitter and Facebook, or just Twitter, stay on that platform. Just because you think you see everyone on Instagram and it's working for them, doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna work for you. You have to figure out what works best for you and your community and what doesn't. And that's not every social media site. So definitely make sure you experiment, you have fun, but more importantly, you see what's gonna really work for you. And, we are that. and then of course, video content. Um, just different way of looking at the educational videos um, as far as like National Mask on Mule Day, um, at Zuzu. So if you have any national holidays that are coming up, definitely celebrate those as well. And then also, just like in this example, they were thinking about Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving uh, from Takoya. Um, just different ways that you can stay engaged in different ways that you can stay top of mind as well. So of course, educational videos um, with people still doing curbside delivery, you know, limited spaces in, but also people eating outside as well in different states. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you're lending these educational videos, but also giving out frequent updates for your local business as well. 
And then also, I know we talked about this, you know, Facebook and YouTube, make sure you have these videos and, you know, make sure that you're also um, exper experimenting with them as well. Make sure you're having fun with them, but more importantly, be consistent with them. And I will say that just because one video has 20 likes or 16 or, you know, 12, you're not really going for that when you look at video, nor for that when you post on your social media sites. What you're really looking at is your views, but also how much is it getting shared? Um, are you getting comments on it? That's your, really, that's your real metric you should be looking at, not if you get so many likes on something. Okay, so our third way to make sure that you're going to end 2020 strong, but also, you know, just stroll into 2021, just feeling amazing, is growing your community through great customer service. So our next poll question is, and I wanted to ask this, and I actually love this question, is how many of us respond to our reviews on our review sites? You can vote yes, you can vote no. Awesome. Okay. So you definitely want to make sure that you're growing your community through great customer service. And there's different ways that you can do this. Yes, you can respond to reviews. Um, but more importantly, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, is being preemptive, proactive, and reactive. And I definitely want to make sure that you're doing and practicing these things as well. And I'm going to be honest, you don't have to respond to your reviews right away. I actually encourage you to take a step back, read the review, see if you need to take it offline, you know, see if you want to type something longer for a really great positive review. You know, just don't type out thanks, we hope to see you again. You know, really add your personality into it, really make it authentic, and sometimes that just takes a little bit of time. So the first thing that we're going to go over is how to respond to your positive reviews, really responding to your reviews in general. So let's go with this first one. They said, I'd eaten lunch and dinner at this fantastic little spot several times, and Greg, the owner, and staff had always been as wonderful in the food and drink they serve. Because of that, Marie, now my wife, and I chose the really pretty patio a little more for our wedding and reception dinner. I can't say enough superlatives for the way this was handled from planning with Greg. His wonderful suggestion for the champagne to the food suggestions and the perfect service and food. We had a wonderful wedding followed by a great evening of food and drink for all of our guests. Um, job well done. I cannot wait to return a little more now that the slide down is over. So this was a little bit earlier. So we're going to be looking at different ones and how this is going. So Jim, thanks so much for this wonderful review. It was such a pleasure hosting your wedding. It was a beautiful day and we're honored to be a part of it. We can't thank you enough for your kind support and encouragement. We look forward to having you two back in the restaurant soon. We'll have, your, we'll have our delicious food waiting as always. So one of the first things you want to think about is using the person's first name and the response to the review. That's really important. When you think about this and... <laughs> me and my parents were talking about this not too long ago, they were like, yeah, whenever we would just say, hey, come here, when you were little, you wouldn't come here, but when we would say your name, like, hey, Jeffrey, come here, you would walk towards us. So think about that. When you're responding to your reviews and you're just saying, thanks so much for this one review, it was such a pleasure hosting the wedding, not even your wedding, um, think about if you did it a little bit differently. Think about if you didn't make it as personable. It would feel like as if you weren't talking to that person. It would feel like you're just talking to air. So really think about when you're responding to these reviews, think about when you write these out, type these out, the person that you're responding to is right in front of you. So use their first name, recall some things they just said, and more importantly, that open line of communication. Now, one thing I want you all to note is people see this as useful, three people do. So that's really, really important. Don't just look at these reviews as just a review. Look at how people are actually using them and how they're actually getting engaged with them as well. So let's look at this next one as well. So another great review, same restaurant. Um, good social distancing between tables made, no, made for a no tension meal. The bolognese was terrific as my wife's salmon. As always, their Greek salad was fantastic. Great service, nice lively atmosphere, and the food is still top notch. Can't wait to get back. So Michael T. Phoenix, Arizona. So the business owner, Greg, responded back. And of course, again, saying Michael, we're thrilled you came to see us for such a delicious meal. Our team loves serving up the entrees you love. The bolognese is a favorite for sure. So being personable about the bolognese, you know, one of their favorites for sure, come back and visit us again soon. So it's definitely making sure you're responding back to those reviews. Now, 
as you can see, and I'll go back just to this one. So this one was done on 8.17, responded back on the 24th. Remember, when you respond to these reviews, it doesn't matter if you respond back two seconds after it was left, five minutes, five years. What really matters is you're taking in consideration your future customers as well. So you're not just responding for the sake of Michael or for the sake of Don. You're responding, you're responding for everyone else that's deciding where they want to do business with you or someone else. Now, one thing that I feel like working in social media for a long time and, and doing these things is responding to negative reviews and knowing when to take them offline and not you know, how to get them offline, but know when to take the conversation offline, whether that's a phone call or an email. So neutralize negative reviews. I, I always suggest to never try to get a review taken down because that doesn't make you seem authentic. Think about this, if you went somewhere and they just had all five-star reviews, and yes, sometimes that is great, that happens. You know, they might have reviews other places that we might just not see. But at the same time, make sure that you don't just try to get reviews taken off because it might tarnish your reputation. The average star rating is a 4.7. So definitely make sure you know that you're being authentic on social media, you're being authentic on your review sites. And so this is just a great way to do so. So Dong left a review. He said it was just there on a weeknight to meet to meet a new a few friends. Arrived first, sat down at a table, ignored for ten minutes. It was a very slow night. I've worked in industry for years. This place was overly staffed for sure. The number of tables or patrons present. Bartender made visual eye contact with me at least three times. Not once did she help to inform the waiting staff. Two servers who made eye contact with me were while still attending to other parties. You know he goes on. I can fix my self drinks at home. I went out for service and interaction, which was non-existent as I and Asian Mouse that they're being ignored by multiple staff members. So you wanna respond back to reviews. More importantly, you wanna make sure you know when to take them offline. And you also wanna know when to defend and apologize as well. So this is a great example. They said, we're sorry you didn't have the best experience. We strive to make our guests feel welcome, appreciated and satisfied with amazing food and fantastic service. I would like to discuss your recent visit. Please reach out to me directly at Tony at sq1c.com. So yes, they could have put Dong's name in front of this. He's an elite 2020. He has 88 friends, 87 reviews. So this is a legit person. So that's one thing that I could have said they could have probably done better is write Dong's name in there. But ultimately they did what they did, what they knew what to do, what was best. And that's take the conversation offline. There doesn't make any sense to go back and forth with the customer online unless that customer initiates it. You know, they've responded, you've responded, now the ball's put back in their court. You've initially, you know, left a personal email address, your company email address, so to make sure that you're getting engagement from that customer as well. Or leave a phone number and ask them to ask for you personally. But never give out free things, um, you know, never discount something publicly, because that's just gonna create a snowball effect. And I've seen that on social media sites and it's not pretty. So definitely make sure you're responding to the review you're taking it offline or you know you're doing something a little bit different but definitely make sure you're doing those things and so this is another one you know so disappointed um you know they respond back they said ashley i'm sorry to hear about your recent experience you know we're always working on ways to improve it in the kitchen efficiency execution of our recipes the same business and they go on to say please reach out you know same person so definitely make sure that when you're responding back to these reviews that you're being as authentic as possible. More importantly, you know, you're also putting that person's first name as well. So I know we talked about this a little bit earlier and that was practicing social customer care. Um, like I said, you think about your customer service team, you think about responding to reviews, but what a lot of us tend to forget is, you know, like in this example of Hotel Valley Ho, um, treat your palate with one of our craft cocktails at Zuzu, like the old man, the five C's made with, and they say the local AZ Distilling Company, Commerce Gin. This is a part of social customer care. You're letting people know what's in your drinks, your food, new menu items. You're letting customers have an inside peek of your local business as well. Remember, we wanna make sure we're as authentic and as personal as possible, and practicing these types of social customer care does exactly that. And so this is just a great example, but this one is from Condor Chocolates. They're a chocolate business in Georgia, in Athens, Georgia. So as we're gearing up for the holidays, I thought about this and I was like, you know, I'm gonna definitely deliver people some chocolates, get them some cookies delivered. I do love some sweets around this time of the year. Um, 
And so I like this example. They did a winter truffle box. But not only that, it's not that they just took a picture. The picture looks great. They go into detail of what the different chocolates are. And I just took a few snaps of some. And the first one was peppermint, our classic dark chocolate ganache with peppermint. I mean, look at the attention to detail, but also look how they colored it as well. Um, but also they let you know exactly what this is made of. Spice cranberry, dark chocolate ganache with cinnamon and cloves on top of a cranberry pate fruit. And then Mayan bringing a little heat with cinnamon and cayenne, dark chocolate and ganache. Now the Mayan actually sounds really good. So you definitely want to make sure you're not just taking a great photo and hoping that's going to do the trick. You really want to make sure you're going above and beyond and, you know, writing a little description of exactly what's in each of your chocolates or in each of your boxes as well. So our last point for the day, and I think the point that is really important, especially right now, because if you think about it, we went over our organic strategy first. And you know, now we're ending it with how to foolproof your advertising strategy without breaking the bank. And I love this talking point because I wanted to make sure as a local business, you're honestly not putting that much money into your advertising strategy when it comes to boosting posts, advertising online, but also working with influencers and brand ambassadors as well. Um, you definitely also want to make sure that you're looking at your ROI in a totally different way as well, because the way that you look at ROI as far as your metrics with social media it's going to be a little bit different than what you're thinking. So my last and final poll for the day is, um, how many of us actually have an advertising strategy in place already, or we're currently using one? And don't be shy, let us know. Okay. So, when you're trying to foolproof your advertising strategy without breaking the bank, one of the first things you need to know, and one of the first things you should be doing in your organic strategy is know your audience. And I love this because <laughs> when you think about it, you ask anyone, they're like, oh, everyone is my audience. Well, everyone is not necessarily your audience. And the reason why I say that is because you want to look in your specific immediate area, but also you want to take a look at around who's coming to you the most outside of your city as well, where they're coming from, the distance, everything. More importantly, you can break that down on Facebook and see and get even more granular with it. You can look at if they're single, if they're married, if they're in a family. You can look at education level. You can get really particular about who you're promoting your business to. More importantly, how you can advertise your local business as well. So definitely make sure you know your audience, who you're speaking to, but you already know that because you already have your brand and everything down packed because you have your organic strategy in place from our first talking point. So you should already know your audience by now because you're already developing that community. So paid social media strategies. I want us to think of these two things, well really three, and these two things and three things only. <laughs> paid advertisements and boosted posts, running influencer, really should be brand ambassador campaigns as well. So paid advertisements and boosted posts. When when we think about marketing and we think about um, social media, you know, we always think about these people that are coming with these huge campaigns and, you know, they're taking these great pictures, they're staking these great photos, you know, they're glazing over that, you know, bun over the burger so it shines. I'm sure that happens somewhere, <laughs> but it's not happening here. And the, the some tips and tricks of way you can make that happen is by doing these three things. Doing paid advertisements that are not going to break the bank, boosting your post, you already have your organic strategy down and working with influencers and brand ambassadors. And one of the first things that you should look at is your goals. So the reason why, of course, we want to boost posts and do advertisements and, of course, work with influencers is because we want to bring in more customers, we want to drive more business. But when we look at it from the standpoint of social media, that's not necessarily what our goals should align with. So increasing fan count, page and post impressions, your post reach and link clicks. So some things that we need to consider, and I know we talked about this earlier in your bio is make sure that that link is serving a purpose for you. If it's not, get rid of it. A thing that I do suggest is, in, is getting a link tree. And that's where it's a site that'll take you over to separate links and it can connect you to your website. They can do reservations, they can do delivery. Um, you can also have those tabs up here on your Instagram as well. Um, you can embed those um, buttons. But you definitely also want to make sure that you have a link that could also take them to those options as well. 
So your paid advertisements in your boosted post. So right here with Snooze Eatery, I like this, free delivery through December 27th. Right now, no one really wants to go anywhere. Um, people, Most people are staying at home, but they're still ordering from local businesses and local eateries. So one way to entice them is free delivery. Now, when you're thinking about boosting your post or advertising, you should think about a few, a few options. They should be events, specials, discounts, and promotions. Um, you always wanna make sure you're boosting these types of posts. And always make sure that you're working with your organic strategy first before you start boosting. And that's how you're gonna really tell if a post really needs to be boosted or not. So what you need, of course, is a great photo, a video, or graphic. And what I love about local businesses is we always think about, oh, we don't have enough photos. Y'all have a ton of photos. <laughs> and you have a ton of people that are ordering from you that are summer dining in or ordering catering um, options as well. Make sure that you get photos from them. And the best way to do that is, is put it in your bio saying, tag us in the photos when you get delivery from us, or when, um, when you pick up food or curbside, or you ordering catering from us. Let them know that. So that way you have a bank of photos to choose from as well. But these are some great options. Um, and then also set goals for the results. You know, is that more engagement? Is that more shares? And remember, we're not just here for the likes. You know, this post over here, what Toledo's Mexican restaurant in Clovis got a comment, but also got three shares. So think about it that way. This post got shared three more times than it originally probably would have. That means it got in front of 300 more people than it originally would have just because they decided to boost a post after they did it organically. So definitely make sure that you're looking at the pros and the cons of doing advertisements and boosted posts because they both can work in your favor and they're not gonna cost you a lot of money if you have that organic strategy down first and then you look into boosting and advertising. So the three R's and we use these at GoDaddy and I love them, especially when we're trying to even find influencers for our company. But even for local businesses, these are some things that you need to be looking at. First of all, their reach. So I'm gonna show you some examples in a minute. The size of their following. Yes, it's important, but that's not always the key thing, but it is an important R, the size of their following. Um, that really does matter. Um, but when you look at that, their reach and their relationship and the relevancy, that's why all these are connected right here. Because the relevancy is a niche and type of content. You know, some influencers, they do really great for a while and then they kind of start to trail off. Same with brand ambassadors. You know, is this person a well-rounded person? Can they appeal to everyone? You know, are they engaging? Do they already love my brand? Because why would you want to pay someone to love your brand? They should already love your brand. I don't care if the person is six years old or six years old. You know, if someone loves your brand, you should be able to work with them. And those are usually the type of people that are going to want to work with you for free. And now relationship. Do they have a quality relationship? Are they engaging? And this is going to sound very cheesy, but, you know, can you see yourself having a conversation with them, you know, from a distance? But, you know, can you see them in your restaurant? Do you see them, you know, promoting your products, your services, your food items, your drink items, your catering services? You know, so you have to ask yourself the reach, the relevancy, and the relationship. If you want to work with brand influencers or brand, amb brand ambassadors and influencers. So running influencer campaigns. I took two different ways of looking at this, and I hope, I hope you all get this as well. So Jess Kotler, she's a Texas blogger. Casual style, no BS motherhood, minimal decor, travel twin mom, plus one, full-time social strategist, Austin, Texas. So she's got a lot on her plate. You know, she's a wife, she's a mom. You know, she loves eat, so she loves quick things. She loves local businesses. So if you're a restaurant, you're probably wanting to partner up with her. You know, if you're a kid-friendly restaurant, definitely want to partner with her. You know, any type of restaurant, this is probably your ideal candidate because she's going to appeal to everyone. Kids, moms, couples, you know, people that, you know, are trying to do it all, and still trying to stay sane at the same time. And so definitely make sure, you know, you're looking for these types of influencers to work with. You know, even check their posts. Have they already been to your restaurant? Do they already love your food? Because some of them post just because they love the business, they love the food that much. And some of them are like, hey, I wasn't paid to do this, but I love this restaurant this much, or I love this drink that much, I gotta tell you all about it. And sometimes that's how they start their story or their content. So definitely make sure you're looking at these types of influencers, just like with this one, ATX Food Guy. This one is a little bit more obvious. <laughs> um, and most of the food and um, drink people that usually see, they work all together, so food and drink. Um, so ATX Food Guy, I personally taste every dish posted to offer the best food recommendations in Austin and beyond. 
don't forget to check my website for city guides. So that's the one thing that um, that I hope you've all been noticing is city guides as well. While everyone has been social distancing and you know travel's been limited, um, most people have just been packing up their car and going to different cities as well and trying out different foods. More importantly, and we'll talk about this later, is adding guides in Instagram. So instead of you know people posting this to their website, they can have their own guide on their social media site. Um, but definitely make sure when you're looking at influencers, you're looking at who's going to be right for you, who's not going to be right for you, and even see like look through his highlights or her highlights. Maybe they posted you know from your business. And you're like, oh, wow, they already did. I can reuse this content, ask them, and even try to start to work with them as well. And this is just a post from Jess Kotler, the, the influencer we saw a little bit earlier. So she went to Verbana, um, and this was a post um, that she did for them. And that she was actually hosted. So um, hosted, gifted, along those same lines. Um, you can gift influencers, brand influencers, things. If they already have been to your restaurant, they already like you. This is just something on the top if you are like, I can't, um, you know, pay you, but I can, you know, host you, offer you free food, offer you menu items to choose from and, you know, taste it as well. Because your influencers, they're going to take the greatest photos. They're going to take about a million and they're going to go through them and they're going to narrow down the best ones as well. They're going to try all your food and they're going to also get engaged with your customers as well. So Jess said, okay, those potatoes, I legit was in awe of the flavor. And I still haven't been to this place, but these potatoes look great. So definitely make sure you know that you're trusting your consumer content and working with your influencers or your brand ambassadors and your local customers over just publishing branded content all the time, really making sure that it's working for you and not against you. So this is my page. <laughs> um, I wanted to give you an insight of what you should be looking for in your insights, your metrics. Remember, you want to make sure that you're doing this um, you're having a great advertising strategy, but in order to do that, you've got to look at your metrics and see what's working for your business and what's not. So the best way to do that is look at your metrics. So on Instagram, you can either click the insights button on your business profile or these three lines up here. So I chose the three lines and then it takes me over to insights and then it'll pull up content, activity, and audience. So I love this because I can see overall who unfollowed me, who followed me, but also your audience. So my favorite thing is, my, my favorite question is, who do I know my audience? Like, you know, who do I know I'm promoting to? Your answer is right here in your social media insights. You know, I can see my audience is the 25 through 34 range, 57% women, 43% men. But the thing I love about Instagram, it tells you essentially when to post. And especially right here, you can see that my friends, my followers, my fans, if you will, <laughs> they're engaged with me most between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. So I know if I really want to get the most engagement from them, I'm going to post in stories and then maybe post once or something or twice or three times a week in my actual news feed. So definitely make sure that you're looking at your metrics, your insights, and you're seeing what works for you and not, um, and not against you. And last but not least, you know, the things that you really want to look at to make sure that you're going to monitor, test, really organize your social strategy to get the most out of your 2021 is brand awareness, customer satisfaction, gaining new customers and brand loyalty. And this is all can be monitored on your social media sites, brand awareness. They look at your logo, your colors, they should be able to recognize you. Customer satisfaction, are people leaving reviews? Are they leaving good reviews? Are you responding back to those reviews? Getting new customers, get engaged in those comments. You know, turn a customer into a lifelong customer, make them a repeat customer, whether that's ordering online, picking up curbside or delivery, getting a drink kit, and last but not least, brand loyalty. Make sure that you encourage brand loyalty. Be consistent with your posting and your hashtags. More importantly, y'all, have fun, please. Please have fun with social media. Um, if, if I can teach you anything today and lend my expertise to you, have fun. Mix it up. But also, you know, don't forget to check in and see what's working and not working. And I always suggest doing this. Set a reminder for 20 minutes. That it shouldn't take longer than 20 minutes on your phone for you know, just 20 minutes on a Friday or whenever you can, look through your metrics on your social media sites in your reviews and you know, respond, check those metrics and then you know, table it to the next week. So that way at least you're checking in and you're seeing what's working for you and what's not working for you. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to y'all. I know we have a few, moment, a few minutes left, um, but definitely wanted to dive into some Q and A. 
So any questions that you might have, you know, please let me know and we can go ahead and start to answer those as well. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. So we did get a couple of questions um, and I know we're short on time, so we'll try to get to all of them. Um, mm -hmm. One of our attendees wrote, I have been inconsistent with posting on social media and on my blog because of other imperative tasks and loss of motivation. Do I achieve or do I archive my post on Instagram and start fresh or should I just keep posting? So just keep posting and an easy way for you to get back into the to the gist of posting is start with like a tip Tuesday or um, or a tip Monday or something like do something like that where you can be consistent and it's going to be the same type of content but it's going to be different so give out a tip on Tuesdays or Thursdays and that way you can start to make yourself consistent because it'll be a routine that you set for yourself so that way you're not diving all in but you're getting your feet wet great and how can I determine which hashtags are working for me and which I should drop from future posts Awesome. So the biggest thing that you, the way that you can see this is one, the big teller is, are you using them consistently? If you're not, then scratch them. Number two, make sure that you already are using two to three consistent hashtags. Like I said earlier, that's your branded, your industry, and your local. Make sure you're constantly using those three types of hashtags. And the other way that you can figure it out is clicking on the actual hashtag that you use in your post and really see if it's gaining any traction or see if anyone else has been using it. If not, stop using that hashtag and start looking at what other businesses around you are using and start to play around with them. Remember, stick with your consistent three, local, branded, popular. Great. Or industry, sorry, so yeah. <laughs> uh, do you recommend any apps to check out social media insights um, or to get to know your customers better? Definitely, um, the biggest one, I, this is going to sound horrible to say, but the biggest one I can honestly suggest to all of you is really just looking at your insights on your social media platforms. Um, that's going to give you the truest answer because those are going to be your truest, um, gosh, if I can talk today, insights and metrics. So um, always be on the lookout like in your Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and they can usually pinpoint them to you. If you look into your settings, you'll be able to find it, um, actually your insights or your metrics tabs, and you'll be able to look in to see who's getting engaged with you, who's not. And that's going to be able to help you plan out your social content better for this year and also early next year as well. Fantastic. And now someone is asking um, if you could better explain what the Yelp Elite 2020 is. Definitely. So I have a few friends actually work for Yelp and so I'm seeing this all the time, but I also knew this before. Um, so when you respond, not respond, when you leave like so many reviews and you know you do all these things on Yelp, you get classified sometimes as an elite Yelper. And so they have events for like all these people that leave reviews like at restaurants and different types of events for them to continue to visit local businesses to leave reviews. Um, and so it's actually really cool. So people that leave a lot of reviews and that create a lot of buzz and are very trustworthy on these platforms, they get these types of awards like an elite Yelper. Great. And one last question. Um, we have an attendee who works for a food and beverage industry education and networking organization. And they're wondering how they use the tools that you just presented um, as a way to show support, as a way of showing their organization as a support to the industry. Um, wait, can you repeat the question one more time? How, I'm sorry. How can, how can their organization take some of this information and, and use it as a resource for their members and for the industry at large? Definitely. Um, I feel like I think you said earlier that they will be receiving a copy of this webinar. You know, definitely feel free to um, share this with your colleagues. And also, I know below in the handout section, um, we've worked together to provide y'all a list of links that direct you to our GoDaddy um, our GoDaddy website with all of our blogs. Um, but also, feel free to peruse those blogs. And we also have another site. Um, it's GoDaddy Open. And so it's called Open We Stand. So if you type online into Google, like GoDaddy Open We Stand, it'll come with a huge list of resources for businesses right now and ones that we started specifically just for this year um, during the pandemic. So definitely go to GoDaddy and look for our blog for the garage and you'll be able to look at a ton of resources, but also a lot of links here in the handout section for you to click and it'll guide you that way as well. Great. So I know we're at the end of our time, but a really good question just came through. So it okay. says, do you have any tips for food service or residential appliance industry people when it comes to posting? 
Yeah. Um, so one thing that I do love is, um, and I see these sometimes because I follow the restaurant distributors of like when they sell these things to the restaurants is your biggest ticket is going to be your Q&A, your explainer videos is how you're actually showing off your products um, online. And you might think, oh, that sells you. We've done that before. But the biggest way to also do this now on social is doing it, especially on the holidays, is in a guide, but also doing it in a series as well. So like I said earlier, you know, somebody was talking about, oh, I've gotten off with posting. The best way to start doing something like this to create more buzz is start doing something consistently. So a tutorial Tuesday, tutorial Thursday, what have you. But really make sure that you're, you're diving into video content. That's going to be helpful as well. Because video, people only want to see video for 15 to 30 minutes, or 15 to 30 seconds, sorry, for it to be digestible and easy. So lean into video, start with a series, and start demonstrating your um, products and your services in a way that's going to be an experience for them and not just a straight up sale. Great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Jeffrey, for presenting this, as well as for all of you to attending. For attending, um, just to reiterate, there will be a recording of this made available. You should all be receiving an email in the next few days um, with that link. And as Jeffrey mentioned, uh, feel free to share that with your colleagues. Um, he also mentioned that we do have a document available in the handout section of your dashboard. So feel free to take a look at that with some um, helpful GoDaddy resources and links. Um, really again just thank you so much thank you jeffrey again for presenting thank you GoDaddy, for for bringing this session to us and we hope everyone has a great rest of your day thanks everyone